waiting for the crop to ripen up. We did as much as we can. So the combines are set. Shame, but they're set. But I'm gonna use a loader. And you remember that big tree that ripped down from the hail? Let's go clean that up and get it kind of cleaner. shame that that tree died. It used to be a row of trees all along here. And what happened was they ran a new gas line into our house and they had a trencher. And without thinking about it, they ran the trencher right along the front of this road here and just chopped all the roots off of these trees. And so that tree slowly has been dying over the last like 15 years. And it finally, uh, finally bit the dust. But these ones are still making it, but I know their roots got cut too. So there's all kinds of cottonwoods along the face of this road. But it's thinning out. I guess it makes our view a little nicer if you don't want to look at trees, which we don't have that problem around this place. Relocated to the new rabbit and uh, marmot habitat, or I should say rock chuck. And weasels, there's a few of them hanging out in this stuff too. It's kind of our little habitat for animals, kind of cool. All right, well, we're about two days out for the big rain. There's still some water on the ground over there. And we're just kind of checking the spring wheat to see if it's ready. It's a pain to take the combine, drive all the way to the field, just harvest a header's width and be like, oh, it's too wet. So what we do is we take it and, uh, well, I pulled out the ground real easy. We grind it up in our hands like this, and we kind of can tell just by the kernels if they're hard or not. And if they're hard, it's good to go. If they're soft, it's not good to go. And we'll also twist the straw up too and see how well it grinds up. But I think overall, it's probably still wet. So it's like 15% moisture, I bet. So here's a test that we like to do, is if the straw is still wet, you take it and you grind it like this. Well, it's actually not too bad. If it rips apart, it's going to shred fairly well in the combine, but if it just keeps turning and twisting, then it's a little tough. Yeah, maybe by the end of the day, we might be able to get in the field. We'll see. It's windy today. It's going to be warmer. Um, it won't take long. It'll dry it down. So we'll go find some more stuff to do, and then we'll get back to the harvest game shortly. All right, let's roll. Now you're probably wondering, what is this thing? There's a lot of people that know what it is, but then there's a lot of people that probably don't know what this thing is actually for. This here is a flexicoil coil packer. The purpose of this is you pull it behind your plow, so after you till the ground, you get a bunch of big clumps and the furrows that kind of go wavy wave and wavy wave. This will actually mash down those furrows and it'll break up all the clumps. Now this is ours. We let somebody borrow it about a year and a half ago, and as they were using it, it broke in half. Well, 
they said they were going to get it done last year and then they said they were going to get it done before the seating because we wanted to use it to for a few things and it didn't get done and then they said they're going to get it done and said they're going to get we finally decided you know what nick and i we went over picked it up brought it back here so now i'm going to try to put this back together weld it all up and make it stronger and uh hopefully this doesn't happen again so there's a couple things that happened the main tube itself broke apart that's why it failed and then of course you got the big joint there that broke and this isn't the first time this has happened um, but this main cylinder the yoke threads is all ripped out so we're gonna have to have that cylinder taken down and they'll have to get a new well cylinder in play or piece it together make a new piece out of it uh, something we'll figure it out but uh yeah we should get this thing back and rolling and and uh should be good this ripped off last time it broke apart and i put a really heavy heavy piece on it and beefed it up well this year is bent so i'm just going to take the torch heat that up and then i got to cut this one completely cut this all out because it's all ripped out and broke and then i'm going to grab a new piece and trace it out drill some holes in it v it and weld the snot out of it and then for this over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take flat iron pieces i'm going to stick them on the inside right here they're going to go all the way so it's going to have a little lip i'm going to weld them inside and then when i slide the tube that's on that side right over here when i slide it over it i can get that welder super super hot and just burn right through into that plate that i'm sitting inside here so then that way i can get a nice hot weld all the way around the outside and then I will plate this so it doesn't have, well, any more breakage points. So let's get this thing back together and uh, so we can use it. Fun, fun. do that'll be fine i'll keep it like that it just has to hold together had a neighbor of ours that upgraded his cutter bar and so he uh just gave us his old ones and there's still a bunch of decent sections on here because we're beating them up pretty bad with the rocks that we have and the low cutting and rather than buying new ones just to break again i'm gonna replace a bunch of these with uh, his so let's buzz them off won't take more than just a few minutes with this impact let's go Nice. Both cutter bars are gone through. We changed out about 40 sections and probably about 10 or so guards. Uh, a lot of these are, you know, they don't have a lot of life left in them, but we'll run them for the rest of the season, let the rocks take care of them. And then uh, next year's uh, 50 bushel crop across the board. I might just get new cutter bars. That'd be great. But let me show you this. This is one of those May West manufacturing skid shoes. So it's a metal shoe plate with a plastic, I guess nylon polymer. One of those things you know what i'm talking about and you can unbolt them as they need replaced this right here is the old style macdon one the difference with this is there's no metal backing behind it so there's two metal brackets under here and once it wears through it punches holes there and there and then you got to replace the whole skid shoe now these do hold up pretty good they're tough they're narrower than the midwest manufacturing skid shoes um so those have a definitely have a better surface area and those you can just put new plates on the bottom when it wears out. Those get to replace the entire thing. So, so far so good. Um, we've had these on the whole season. The ones that you guys saw, Dad just put on his combine. So we'll test them out. But I'm running both in this one because at the end of the season, I want to see which one looks the worst. These were all new when they went on, so we'll find out then. And then we also, in the center here, replaced 
that one plate that goes over the front with these uh, A-West manufacturing skid plates in the front there too. So anyways, I gotta do some uh, feeder chain bars now. C-130 just flew over us. That's cool. Oh, here comes another one. Ha-ha! <laughs> I love it. Oh, those things are cool. Those are old workhorses, man. Is there another one? I think that's it. Wow. I've been inside those, but I've never flown in one. There we go. Two feeder bars installed. Yes, I put all four bolts in. I just didn't show that part. Ooh, this thing's hot. It's going right through the glove. Bounce it. Oh, that baby is hot. So that looks like one inch steel and the only piece that I have that I can use is that piece right there. I don't want to use it because I love, I love that thing. It's. It's awesome to use here. But I gotta use it. bought a new plasma cutter earlier this year and I've never cut inch with it. Oh my. This this thing was worth every penny that we bought. Look at these cuts. I mean, I'm not a pro. I'm a farmer. There's a difference and I like like I said earlier in another video. I strive to be slightly below overachievers. So, that's pretty darn good if you ask me. Now I cut an edge on each side of it because I want to make sure I can penetrate that hot weld into the steel and make sure it's thick because I don't want this thing ripping off and uh, not being very secure. So I'll grind that up a little bit, get it all ready, and then I'll go prep this over here on that, get it all nice and prepped. And I still have to drill a hole on here to make sure that I can pin it and then I can weld it all up and it should be good to go. Bummer, I don't know if you guys can see it, but my screen right now, the little lens that protects my camera, is got lots of welding pits. Well, not welding pits, grinding pits, because I got it too close. Anyways, if you're wondering why it's kind of choppy, that's why. But uh, that is probably the most circlest, roundest hole you've ever seen in your entire life. Yeah, that's, that's something to be proud of. Looks pretty good. Let's go get the hot glue gun and glue this thing together. Welders out there, they understand the struggle of wind. And I'll explain a little bit for those that don't understand. When you're welding with a gas welder, you have a tank of gas. And that gas goes through the wand, and as you're welding, the molten lava weld basically starts to bubble and pop and turns into chicken turds. There's another term for that, but I won't say it. That gas prevents it from turning and popping and making ugly welds. Well, when the wind picks up or a little breeze, it blows the gas away from the weld 
and it makes it very, very challenging to lay down a good beat. Now, I'm gonna say that's not my excuse. I'm not that great a welder, but I think it'll hold. And considering the little breeze that I've got right here, it's gonna have to do, because I ain't starting over. <laughs> I'm done. So the next step is we gotta take that whole entire packer arm, slide it in, pin this one, and then we can take that other arm, set it down, get it all straightened up and weld on it. So that is the next step. But I have to get a pin because I had to cut this pin right here. It was bent and so I better get a pin before we do that. But making progress, that's all that matters. What you doing? Um, I don't know, I have to be on the grind. Yeah, this whole farm's a grind. Okay, we looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and we finally decided to do something a little different. This is actually a four by four tubing. And it would be nice if we didn't have to plate the outside. So we looked in a book that one of our steel places that we get from and they do have three and a half by three and a half square tubing, quarter inch. So, the inside diameter of that is actually three and a half by three and a half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a chunk that's probably about five feet long or so, and we're gonna stick it inside that tubing, and it's gonna go inside this one, so then it's gonna be basically doubled. And then you weld the whole joint up, and I think that'll be plenty of strength for this thing, and I don't think it's gonna have a problem. That being said, my dad took off. He took the cylinder down so they can get that fixed to get a new ram put in it. And then he's gonna get that piece of steel. And when he gets back, then I can put this back together and get it nice and strong. But since I have your attention, I wanted to say thank you guys. No, really, I, I, I truly mean this. Thank you for the support. All of you subscribers out there, you guys are great, really. Without you, we wouldn't be showing what we do here. And it's because of you that we get this opportunity. So thank you very much for being a part of our farm and a part of our lives. And the least I can do is say thank you. So thank you guys, you guys rock, seriously.